everybody. I'm Danielle Downs. Is I'm just lightly misting the hair so that way I can detangle. Because you never really want to go in straight away when the hair is in its naturally curly state because there might be a couple of tangles. So as you can see, I pretty much go in just from the high point of the head and I start detangling from there and keeping everything straight out. So if they're longer, yes, it might flop over the head so you can part it. But seeing as how this mannequin is a little shorter, I'm gonna go in and just splay everything out in a perfect little kind of flattened out afro, I guess you could say. Now, if you like to section out, keep everything neat, have a roadmap, kind of like I do, then I'm just gonna section this into four quadrants, very basic. So going from the high point of the head right behind the ear, for our first section, just clip that away. And then again, from the high point of the head, right down the middle. And now we've got our first little quadrant here. Just have the legs or the arms of it, however you refer to it, going up. So that way it doesn't pop or that you lose control. Gator clips are another great thing. Chopsticks also, so whatever your preference is. But basically you wanna get the hair as secure as possible and just out of the way. And as I said, this is a very easy salon reality kind of highlighting technique. Personally, I love it because I can modify it to all different lengths. I can do as much or as little as I want depending on the head. So always make sure that you're going in, assessing the hair. If you have finer textures and you're using a weave, maybe not use a large weave. You can use a fine weave. So that way it's a little bit more diffused around the head shape. I'm going in with Synchro Lift today. It's great because it's a potato base based lightning system that lifts up to nine levels. What's wonderful for curly hair is the fact that with that potato starch, it's pretty much like a conditioning kind of effect. It's also not gonna irritate if you're using this on the scalp, but mainly I chose it because it doesn't swell especially when I'm doing any of that hand painting. I don't have to worry about it leading on to other areas that I don't want it. When you're doing highlighting with this, you wanna make sure that when you're doing the hand painted portion, you're weaving out a couple of sections. So that way it blurs the line a little bit. Say if somebody wants to blow out their hair and not wear it curly. And again, you can start wherever you want with this. If you wanna start near the ear, and work that way you can. I usually like to start right in the part because that's what this person, you know, your guest is going to see. I also like to take out just a tiny little section right in the front so that way when I'm weaving, it only shows a shadow of that highlight right in the hairline when she goes to pull it back because most, most naturalistas are going to be pulling their hair into like a tighter, slick back ponytail. You really don't wanna make that difficult for someone to look at for like the first two, three weeks if I'm doing like a really heavy week because then it's just gonna look really, really striking. So by having that little veil there, it helps to diffuse it a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna pop in that first highlight. Now, the other thing that I don't worry about is most of the time you wanna make sure that your section is only as wide as the foil itself. But because we're working on a curly girl that really isn't worried about getting this right to the scalp, it's okay to over direct those corners and have those a little further away. So I'm just going in with the corner of my brush just to tap a little bit closer. But as I said, with this one, you can go very close to the edge because it doesn't swell. So you don't have to worry about those bleed marks pushing over the foil line. Which I have watched hairdressers that they can work in basically all white. I used to watch a guy named Floyd Kenyatta. He was like the granddaddy of textured hair for Paul Mitchell back in the day. Okay, so if you need to, go ahead and clip that out of the way. Just make sure that you're not grabbing onto your foil because you don't want to pinch that. So when you're clipping a piece away, just go right over the foil and connect that to the rest of the, the hair that you have clipped away on the other side. Now in the back, seeing as how that's actually a lot thicker and denser than the front section, back here I actually like to just take out a tiny bit of hair. So I'm not doing an even weave the same way that I did up front. This one, I'm only dropping out maybe about three little sections. Effectively, it almost looks more like a weave. I'm sorry, not a weave, a slice. So again, going in with the corner of my brush so that I can just tap that close to the hairline, but not right up. Now, some people, they have like a really long kind of nape area in the back. So you might have to take that in two sections and that's fine. 
So for me, I always say that any technique that you're using, learn it, master it, but also play with it and have fun. So I just weaved out a chunky section and then I just painted that on and then I just lightly just massage that up the hair shaft a little bit so that way it can blur it a little. That way we don't get like a heavy demarcation line where it's just straight blarange. Painting that on and then just going through and lightly massaging that up. Now I'm not like really clamping into the hair because I just want to massage that over the top layer of the hair because once I squeeze that through and I'm saturating top, middle, and the bottom of it, that's where I get that line of demarcation where it's just giving it that light little petting over the top and then massaging that mid shaft. That's where I'm getting the saturation from about just about the midpoint to the end. And then everything that's up here that's over the middle point, that's just gonna get a light little balayage. <laughs> done with our application so we have our hand painted sections that out here on the perimeter I have them just laying over those little triangle sections so they're not touching any other hair and like I said this is a lightener that does not expand so you don't really have to worry about it bleeding onto another section everything that is inside the foils that I did first it's being incubated so that's gonna come up a little lighter everything you see in this nice little lovely pinhead ponytail here is just going to be untouched and that was simply just to get it out of the way and that I won't be using extra product because if anything I would rather not use you know like as much foil or as much body wrap. So if I can leave something on its own, then I do. But again, totally up to you and whatever your preference is. And so that hair technique and coloring technique leads to this lovely, very high contrast, very popped, just lovely metallic kind of highlight. Now what I used to tone with was Paul Mitchell Crema 8NB with 10 volume. Again, I just prefer the cream. It has a lot of really nice emollients and different things like that that just help to condition the hair. So you always wanna make sure that it's leaving the hair in the best state that it can be. So that was another reason that I chose Crema because it's just ultra conditioning and it's a demi-permanent. That's our lesson for today. And I hope I helped out. And if there's any questions, hit me up. My Instagram is um, at the hands downs. Oh, yeah, I try to answer. On the thing real quick. <laughs> Keep going. And I try to answer any questions that are on there. Become friends. Let's talk hair. Share whatever you're doing with hair or whatever discoveries that you have. I love to learn from other hairstylists. Yeah, for sure. So you can see all Danielle's work on Instagram at the hands downs. You know, definitely send her some DMs, ask her some questions, get her uh, And definitely inspire me to get better about posting because right. I take the pictures. I just forget to post them. Yeah, we're all, uh, you'll, you'll do it now. I feel like, I feel like we'll get you, we'll get back into it. Can you do a close up? Yeah, for sure. Close up of um, both of them? I think the, the pre-done one. Okay, so again, because we're using that nice little kind of pinwheel, you can see that right in the top here, it's just an in distribution of color going all the way around. The great thing being is that you can see like little lighter bits, but then you can see some of those darker pieces push some more of the light. So that was with Crema XG 8, 8MV. I mean, this is what I do. I'm I know. Cut. I mean, it's hard. It's all backwards. <laughs> She's looking into a screen, but it's back. And I've um, never done this before. Exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. So everybody's saying that they loved watching it. Looking forward to more. Beautiful work. Love it. Needed this. I think it's cool. I, I'm, you know, guys, let us know if you have any, you know, requests. The full schedule, but already next week, are we doing the, the rainbow color melt thing? Yes. Yeah. So, so next week, we're actually doing rainbow color melt, not on curly hair, uh, which will be really fun. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. So and then we're going to get into relaxers and we're going to do all kinds of stuff, right? So Absolutely. super exciting. All right, let me see. Anything else you want to say, Danielle, besides to go follow you? Have fun with hair and everybody stay safe wherever you are in the world. Mm -hmm.